the Hadley Learning Community is a £60 million PFI development in Telford, Shropshire. An extended school with integrated primary and secondary phases, it's a cutting-edge facility designed to be the school of tomorrow, today. The HLC is an extended school with a vision of providing learning opportunities for people from 0 to 90. It has a special school on site for children with profound learning needs. With a children's centre and community and sports facilities, the HLC needs a confident and able leadership team. Whatever we do, it's a massive commitment because from this, all things will lead. Uh, Former geologist Dr Jill Etuff was appointed as principal of the HLC 18 months before the school opened. One of her first tasks was to appoint her leadership team. So we've gone for this model of a vice principal in either phase and beneath them an assistant vice principal and the five of us together form the leadership team. But for now Jill is the only full-time member of the team. The others have to stay at their existing schools. While the vice principals could allocate one day a week to the HLC, for 12 months Jill was largely working on her own. I expect them to give me at least 110 percent and, and it will be hard work. I'm sure we will get on very well together but you, you know you're always a little apprehensive about that. I sense at the moment that they're not ready to stand on their own two feet, mm. some of them. From here I wanted to say welcome to the Handley Learning Community in big letters. Unlike some PFI projects where heads take a back seat, Jill is working closely with the construction company InterServe and has a hand in making decisions from how best to spend five million pounds on ICT to the colour of the carpets. I like this green. Great colour. It's a lovely colour. By last Christmas Jill was feeling a bit stressed out. We are under enormous pressure on this project. At the moment, it's still all really dependent on me. You know, I am the Hadley Learning Community. And, and it isn't getting me down, but I'm just aware that there is still some big stuff that we've got to do. Yeah. Yeah, I feel slightly pressurised at the moment on, on the volume of work. But reinforcements arrive in January 2006, when the two vice principals are able to join her full time. Paul Topping is vice principal with responsibility for leading the secondary school. Easy to confuse these, isn't it? So get a label on them quickly. He's a science teacher and for the past five years he's been a deputy head. The HLC is his first post at head teacher level. I'm sure we will get on very well together, but you, you know, you're always a little apprehensive about that because you're dovetailing your ideas with people you've not worked with for great lengths of time and uh, we need to make sure that our vision for the organisation um, is coherent and is one that we can put into practice. Last day today. Wherever I go, this goes too. Paul sees a leadership role at the HLC as the chance to realise his ambition of working cross-phase. It was time to move on. Right, down to civic offices. Head of the primary phase is Erica Aston, who has more than five years' experience of running primary schools in Telford. Her existing school was closing due to falling roles. Hadley is the right place for me to be, and it's come at the right time of my career as well. I'm ready for something different and something bigger. But it's hard, really, because I'm leaving the school at a point where um, it's going to be closing in July, and I'm leaving staff I know facing a difficult couple of terms ahead. Erica's leaving assembly is a bit of a tearjerker. Absolutely gorgeous, thank you. Good morning, Mrs. The two assistant vice principals could be described as old guard. Dave Bowyer taught modern foreign languages for 20 years at the closing Alton Park School. For the last 12 months, he's been acting head teacher, overseeing the transfer of all the students but only some of the staff, to the HLC. I never thought I was going to be head 
and it was, a, it was a strange position for me to find myself in. I hope that I can carry the staff with me. I hope that they trust me. Of course, in the new school, I will be assistant vice principal. So I've just got one year as a headship, uh, and I'm going to make sure that it's the most successful year the school has ever had. And Kate Whitaker is acting head of the closing Hadley Infant School. Just like Dave, she's been at her school for 20 years and sees the move to the HLC as a new challenge towards the end of her teaching career. I'm really looking forward to being part of a leadership team of a secondary school because although I did a little secondary supply in the 70s, I don't have huge experience with secondary schools. I have taught in junior schools and quite recently I was in a primary school for a term. So I've got quite a lot of experience. I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth into it. It's January and it's 8am in the HLC office in Telford Civic Buildings. Paul and Erica are now working full-time with Jill. The leadership team is up and running. Well, we can't do this until the permanent governing body is in post. And there's we, a, there's a handover from the temporary federated yeah. governing body to the permanent, and that probably is going to happen about October, November yeah. time. Today's agenda includes meeting the uniform suppliers. That looks sweet. Oh, it does. It looks oh, really good. good. A logo has been designed. And it's the first time the team sees what the pupils will be wearing next September. <laughs> what I like is it's a different image from any other school. Yeah. It does match it's beautifully. Just, there's that lovely flow of sameness through it, mm -hmm. with it, with it being slightly different, isn't it? Paul is not happy with the school tie samples. Because I'm not sold on the tie yet. I'd like to look at the opportunity of moving away from a stripe, because that's the traditional school tie. Would you want it, not necessarily in a diagonal stripe, but do that with it? Mm. It's difficult to see it until it's on the uniform. The pricing of the new uniform is a serious and sensitive issue. Hadley is not a wealthy area, and Jill wants to offer parents the best price she can. I want to keep the price right down. I'm not looking to make money on this. I'm looking to get all the children in the uniform. I want to say to parents to buy this kit is this and this, so that I'm very upfront and we market it properly. While the heads and principal plan ahead, the two other members of the team remain in post at their closing schools. Assistant Vice Principal Dave Boyer is getting Orton Park School students ready for the big move, while Kate Whitaker is involved with the room layouts for the HLC's primary phase. And the year threes would be better with that practical area. It's November 2005 and the HLC is having its exterior timbers installed. The underfloor heating is going down in the secondary phase classrooms. Jill, Paul and Erica go fact-finding to a PFI development in Durham. The £35 million Darlington Education Village is being built by Kajima. The glass looks fantastic actually, we've got some really nice features. I still think mine's better. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting layout. Like, yeah. The fact that you've gone for one long bench, yeah, yeah. whereas mm -hmm. we've gone for separate tables. Of course, just ruined my shop by walking towards me. This is the first trip Erica's been on, so it's been really good for Erica because it's the first time she's seen a new prime rebuild. I think she's really enjoyed it. Actually, the lighting is good. The lighting, I'm a good lighting. Yeah. 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 Ball topping can tell the difference between a curved it's wall and a straight wall. wall. The teacher's demonstration bench in the science lab isn't well received at all. Which that's interesting, because presumably the teacher's going to be trapped behind her. Which is a very solid barrier. Well, um, it's like waging war. I like the round window. It's all been a rather peculiar experience for the heads of secondary and primary, Paul Topping and Erica Aston. Since January, they haven't had a school to run, but a school to plan. Paul's responsibilities include designing the cross-phase curriculum and the timetable, whilst Erica takes charge of primary English, easing Jill's workload, allowing her to take a strategic overview. I think what's happening in school leadership at the moment is you have one person sitting at the top of the organisation who, quite honestly, is stretched, severely stretched often. And so I wanted to look at that model that the three of us could actually share out the workload to maximum effect. And um, I think we've achieved that. Yeah. 
Three months before the HLC opens and the loose furniture has been delivered, the class rooms are coming on, but the leadership team has a few qualms about their staff to talk over. I think one of the things we probably haven't done right yet is to sort of explain carefully to staff what each of our roles is from September. There's five of us, yeah, and if there's a crisis or whatever, there's somebody there. But also, to be clear, that we are not going to be firefighting. In June, a two-day staff conference is convened to help address these issues. Jill presents the vision for the new school, which opens in just ten weeks' time. The yellow is primary, and the blues are, are the second reference, secondary phase. This is the silver of the bridge, special school, and then the early years unit and the children's centre. It's an opportunity for the staff to bond, and role-play encourages debate about behaviour management. Oh, no, so it's not fair! OK, sit there, do nothing. See if I notice the difference, OK? <laughs> Primary and secondary curriculum leaders work with their teams to put detail into September's start-up plans. The conference gives staff an opportunity to work with the leadership team at first hand. Unless you indicated me, to me that you wanted to change, I've kept you with the same tutor group. This document here is how the teaching structure is looking at the moment. All right. And the leadership team can assess just how ready the staff are for the challenges ahead. I sense at the moment that they're not ready to stand on their own two feet, mm. some of them. And what we've got to do is, through our leadership of them, is say, yes, you can do that. No, you don't have to keep referring back to us. You are leading your faculty, you're leading your area, and we trust you to do that. But it will be difficult to start with because there will be that comfort zone, whereas in the past, you know, we used to go to you, or we used to go yeah. to Bob, or we used to go to Jim, yeah. and whatever. So they've got to realise who to go to. Yeah. These kinds of days are really good because they see us functioning in our leadership roles yeah. in a way they probably don't see, because most of them only come across us yeah, in interview right. settings, really. Mm -hmm. um, or and also, we see specific groups, don't we? You meet <coughs> with a group of... I don't know, teaching assistants, or you meet with a faculty, or we meet with the infant staff. Or, and I think to see us three, and now five, they'll learn from us and they'll grow with us about leadership styles and things, won't they? I want people coming to us with ideas and saying, look, can I do this? You know, I've got the opportunity to take 25 kids to go and, you know, go into a gifted and talented workshop and what. Can I say, yes, go and sort it. Jill Etuff is well aware of the scrutiny that the HLC and her own role as principal will be under, so she drives herself hard and expects her staff to do the same. I've made it pretty clear that, you know, I expect them to give me at least 110%, and, and it will be hard work. You know, year one will be tough for these people. They're going to have new people, new teams, new responsibilities. But, you yeah, I believe that there's a real energy there. Jill's own energy is boosted by her love of walking and mountaineering. It gives her the opportunity to leave the stress of the HLC behind. All teachers need to find time to relax. No, yeah, I just totally switch off. And I haven't gone through the guilt thing, you know. I shouldn't be here, I should be at home or at work, you know, striving forward with, with the job. Um, and I think... It's important for your staff that they don't feel guilty if they're not at work. And if I'm the principal and I'm not flogging myself to death, then hopefully I'm a good role model. But when we're at work, you know, we get on with it and we're committed and we work hard.